My name is Troy Jordan. Where are you from? I'm from Canada, I'm from Burlington. It's a city close to Toronto in Ontario. Okay. How long have you been teaching and living in Korea? I've been teaching and living in Korea for a little over eight years now. So, and I've been teaching in many different cities over in Korea, in uh, Gwangju, in Seoul, Suwon, and Cheonan. How long have you owned your own business? All right, I've had this school for three years now. And uh, beforehand, I was working for about five years for other schools, uh, teaching and managing, uh, basically gathering skills needed to open up my own business. Right, what is the name of your school? Elite English Academy. Okay, and where are we? We're in Cheonan, in Korea. It's about an hour south of Seoul. Okay. How does your hagwon compare to others? <laughs> I'd like to think mine's the best, but honestly I feel that uh, the reason why I opened a school in the first place was I was sick and tired of uh, the hagwons being a business and not a place for education. Yeah. So uh, I opened up my school uh, based on trying to get children to speak, read, and write in English as fluently as they can before they go on to middle school. So I'm dealing primarily with uh, elementary school students. Some teachers have difficulties living abroad. How do you think they can avoid most of these problems? It depends on your personality and the attitude you have when you're coming abroad. If, you, uh, if you're all gung-ho about your own country and we're number one, we're number one, you're probably not going to make it too long living in another country. You really have to come with an open mind and uh, just remember that you're a visitor in this country and uh, they've been doing things their way for a long time and they're not about to change, even if you think your way is better. So it's uh, the more adaptable you are, the, the better. If you have a positive uh, attitude towards things, um, it, it helps make things a little more smooth as well. How do you manage your students? <laughs> Classroom management. Well, yeah. basically I tell teachers that they have to control the children. And if they do have any problems, I'm there and my uh, partner is also there to support the teacher and make sure that problems are solved quickly. Uh, we inform the parents of any problems so that they know as well. And uh, repeat problems are usually dealt with by having the child leave the classroom. Uh, sometimes if a child is just not responding well, we just send them to another teacher's classroom and they usually don't like that because they're in a, in a setting with other students they don't know. Uh -huh. It can be a little embarrassing and uh, they're, they're not, you know, they're in an English environment. Perhaps they might learn a little something, but they really don't want to be there. They'd rather be in their classroom. So. Uh, we have different techniques and uh, it really all depends on the problem yeah. or the student yeah. or um, the teacher themselves. But in general, I don't have a lot of problems with my teachers or students. Yeah. Do you have any sort of a reward system like stamps or stickers or toys or anything like that? I usually let individual teachers do what they feel is best. Okay. Um, in my classes, the reward is being educated. So I don't give yeah. them anything. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, a lot of other teachers, they'll have stickers. If everybody's done their homework, there's a sticker that goes on a chart. And, you know, whatever class has the most stickers at the end of a semester might have some kind of a pizza party or something like that. So yeah. I really leave it up to the teachers. I think that what they feel comfortable with and what they feel is best for the students is, is good. So. Right. Are the students allowed to speak Korean in the school? Uh, in the very lower levels, we restrict them to only speaking English, and then as they get a little bit higher, the, the material gets a little more difficult, and there are times where they need to speak a little Korean for definitions or to help a friend. Yeah. Uh, usually in the very lower levels, they have to put up their hand and ask, Teacher, may I speak Korean? Right, right. Then the teacher will give permission. And, right. Yeah. So what happens if they they speak Korean when they're not supposed to in class. What's well, something that you so would do? So one thing that teachers might do is they might put their name on the board and when they get three X's, then they'll either have to stay after class or they'll get sent outside to the hall or something along those lines. Okay. Um, we do report cards once every semester, every four months, and um, that's when the teachers are able to let the parents know everything. So how many times their child hasn't done homework how the child's attitude is working independently or with other children and things like that. And uh, I always like to keep the mothers, the parents involved. And um, if child's not doing their homework, 
three times, then they, they get a phone call and they're, they're, the parents are not notified, you know, yeah. your child hasn't been doing their homework. Yeah. Um, when a child hasn't done their homework in our school, uh, the teacher automatically, they send them out of the room. You haven't prepared, you're not ready to be taught. So they go out in the hallway, they do their homework, when they're finished, they can come into the class. What do you think makes a good teacher? Uh, there's a lot of qualities that make a good teacher. Um, patience is very important. Um, eight years in Korea, I've gained a lot of patience working with children yeah. and uh, dealing with parents and things like that. Um, enjoying your job. If you really enjoy teaching, then there will be no major problems. Even yeah. when I was in Seoul managing other schools, I wasn't necessarily teaching. Yeah. And I missed the classroom atmosphere and, and interacting with the students and, and teaching in general. So even though I am the owner of my own school, I am still a teacher. I teach almost full time. I teach about 60% of mm -hmm. what the other teachers do. So mm -hmm. I can understand what problems they have. I can understand the students better. And I know the students. So when a teacher comes to me complaining there's a problem with a certain student, I know before the teacher finishes the sentence what the problem is, probably is with that child. How much money can a teacher save in a year? Well, it all depends if you want to you know, right. live off of ramen every day. <laughs> right. I'd say in general the teacher shouldn't have any problem saving $1,000 a month. Yeah. Um, at the end of a contract, you're also given severance pay in Korea, which is equal to one month's salary. Mm -hmm. So you should very comfortably be able to save fourteen thousand dollars. So um, you can save up to twenty if you're more diligent about what you spend and what you do. But yeah. I would say twelve to fourteen, no problem. Yeah. So it's quite doable. Right. And what advice do you have for those who are interested in coming abroad to teach? I would say preparing uh, as far as which school you want, what you want in a job. You should make a list for yourself of what you're looking for in a job yeah. and what you don't want. And um, especially if it's your first time, you have no idea even the differences between cities. So you have to really talk to the teachers that are currently working in that school. Um, if an employer doesn't want you to talk to them, then completely disregard that employer right away. There's a reason why. Um, I always give the phone numbers and email addresses of all my teachers to anybody who's applying for a position at my school, and even teachers in the past. If, uh, if they want, teachers that have worked here and finished, I can supply them with that information. Yeah. Uh, any school that doesn't do that right away, it's not a good school. They obviously have some difficulties with their staff. Um, it could be cultural, it could, could be many different problems. So definitely speak to the teachers that are currently working at the branch. Speak to them yourself and email them yeah. yourself. Do you have any advice for choosing a location? Yeah, uh, I think if you are um, a very active person, very social person, you're going to want to live in one of the bigger cities like Seoul or Busan. Um, if you're looking for a real cultural experience, then definitely try some of the smaller uh, cities that are further away from the metropolitan areas. Um, the further away you get from the metropolitan areas, the more culture you're going to experience. And uh, if you're a very open-minded person, then you probably really like it. And uh, if you are not, then I would suggest staying in the big cities where you're kind of, uh, it's more westernized and um, you're insulated from the, the, more insulated from the culture of the country that you're Right. And um, another point is living accommodations. Uh, in Korea, they're offered for free, and you have to. Many schools they have single living accommodations or they have shared living accommodations. So you have to decide what would work best for you. Uh, if it's your first time coming abroad, you may want to have a roommate. You know, if you're just at a university, then it's not such a big a deal. And, uh, somebody that's already been here can show you around. When I first started in Korea, that's what I had, and I appreciated a lot. Um, and then you go on from there and you get your own place later on in another contract and uh, you live a little bit more independently. So yeah, yeah. There's good sides to both.